Okay, the next presenter coming to the stage is the Professor Thomas Muller from Page Hungary about the positive margin. It's really unpleasant situation when it occurs after surgery, especially. What should be done? Uh, thank you very much for the for the invitation. Actually, we have a little bit different uh, uh, definition of the black swan, uh, but. Uh, try to do our best. Well, uh, this uh, positive resection line thing depends on uh, where it is, what is the extent, the depth, how many cells are uh, uh, in this uh, resection line, and what was the cell type, uh, and uh, what sort of surgery uh, was done before. And what is very important, again, from the aftercare, uh, the patient and the tumor. That's a non-existing bird, the black swan, like the grief, with the big difference that it's existing. And we know it from the juvenalis, from the uh, Latin author, and even that comes as a surprise and has a major effect. However, on this uh, uh, positive margin issue, there are uh, different opinions and, uh, and ambiguity on the prognostic implication of the margin involvement uh, when we are talking about the R1 resection. The R2 is uh, obviously a very black thing. Some studies start, suggest a negative impact, others have different opinion, uh, and it's uh, more divergent, uh, the opinion on uh, adjuvant therapy. It's absolutely unclear. The series are small, single institutions, and there is only one exception uh, from the uh, Journal of Thoracic Oncology uh, two years ago. I will come back later. Anyway, uh, anyway, the R1 resection is a bad news, but how bad it is really? Uh, the positive resection line report uh, uh, varies between 1 and 17 uh, percent. The American data is around 6 percent. However, in the reports there are limitations when it bias uh, retrospectivity. Uh, we have no data on the details of the local practices. Uh, the anatomic site extension of margin involvement are, uh, uh, have many uh, serious uh, implications. And uh, the uh, carcinoma in situ versus extensive issue is very important again. Uh, in a retrospective, uh, uh, the post-operative uh, uh, actions were mainly radiotherapy uh, after an R1 uh, uh, resection. However, uh, after the millennium, uh, the uh, radiotherapy was uh, replaced by the chemotherapy in many centers. Uh, the uh, big series report that there is a real uh, implication on the survival in the early stages, uh, 1A, 1B, and uh, partially in, one, in stage two, but when uh, we uh, uh, when we are talking about the stage three, uh, the, the negative influence, negative impact is not so serious uh, and, and quite unclear in some cases. Anyway, in the in situ versus invasive R1, it's uh, two pieces of cake uh, and uh, it's less than one person when the stage one uh, cases are involved in this uh, uh, unlucky uh, situation. Uh, the residual disease in the resection line usually follows squamous cell carcinoma, and when uh, the mediastinum is uh, on the spot, then actually all of the possible uh, organs uh, uh, can be involved, and if uh, the N1 disease is ruled out, then the postoperative adjuvant uh, uh, chemo irradiation uh, offers a good hope. Uh, with the lymph nodes, again, uh, there is an ongoing uh, question or the debate, what is R1 really? Because if the highest uh, uh, lymph node is positive, then it's not RO, but R unclarified. The chest wall and the di diaphragm, we just uh, uh, heard about how important the diaphragm is uh, in uh, uh, inflammatory cases. Yes, in the cancer issue, it's the same. Uh, we. Uh, uh, see uh, stage migration from T3 to T4 in the ACE TNM, uh, and that's a bad prognosis. 
But on the other side, in the chest wall, if uh, the margin is positive, then the adjuvant chemoradiation is recommended. The pleural fluid uh, positivity is a per se, uh, a priori uh, R1 situation. However, uh, the survivals in bit, uh, comparing uh, 3B and uh, the, uh, even 3A in some series and the uh, pleural fluid positivity uh, are nearly equal. So that's not the end of the story. And uh, if uh, the cells and uh, other factors are, uh, uh, were taken into consideration, then uh, uh, two or three distinctive groups can be differentiated, and the prognosis and the postoperative adjuvant therapy is uh, recommended in those cases. Uh, what to do if uh, the margin was positive? Uh, obviously, there is a negative impact on the survival, so the R always better than R. Uh, one, no question about that. However, the, uh, the overall survival differs if uh, a, a concomitant uh, uh, radio chemotherapy or radiotherapy followed uh, or in a sequential form. So uh, in uh, uh, some series, the postoperative uh, irradiation after R1 resection uh, makes a, a good impact on the survival. However, the distant metastasis will remain the same. Coming back again to, to this uh, huge American series, uh, 100,025 cases, and uh, 4.7 of them were positive margin. And uh, uh, what they saw, if uh, radiotherapy and chemotherapy uh, were uh, 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 applied in nearly equal cases postoperatively if that was an R1 case. Uh, how, to, uh, how to proceed if a uh, 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 re resection uh, can be done? Uh, yes, uh, the bronchoplasty or a re resection is the second option. Uh, the survival impact of incomplete resection uh, is a, a sort of a, a stage migration. So the R1 uh, uh, stage uh, one case survival com is comparable to an R0 stage two case, and this goes down in all of the spectrum. Uh, an R1 PT1 disease has a survival curve overlapping with uh, the same uh, R0, but with T3 disease, and is speaking for itself. Uh, the chemotherapy, when it was applied, then uh, uh, offered better survival, irrespective of stage, but the radiotherapy, especially in stage one, it made a significantly worse survival than the nothing. In stage two and three, no significant impact on patients. It's a, uh, it's a quite surprising uh, uh, finding. In the stage two and the stage three curves are proving that uh, observation. Uh, yes, uh, if there were no adjuvant therapy in group in stage one, uh, the radiotherapy survival was definitely significantly worse, and if chemoradiation was applied, then it was nearly the same when no adjuvant therapy was applied. Surprising observations. Anyway, there is an obvious strong association between the neoadjuvant therapy and the R1, and uh, the radiotherapy, the neoadjuvant radiotherapy, increases the likelihood of R1 resection. Uh, the sublobal resection uh, and the preoperative neoadjuvant therapies, the, uh, these are the two risk uh, increasers. Uh, no clinical characteristics and the risk for R1 uh, uh, are there. Uh, it's a good uh, quality indicator. Uh, the racial minorities, the out and downs, are at uh, higher risk, obviously, plus the patient demographics influences the the, the, the results. There are missing data really on the impact of the individual caseload, the experience of the surgeon, the caseload, 
the open versus uh, what's uh, procedures, and we have to admit that the, 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 the quality of the pathologist is a, is a player, plus we don't know what's going on on the uh, pathological lab in the staple line issue. So what to do if there is an R1? Uh, irrespective of stage, postoperative adjuvant chemotherapy reduces mortality risk, that's clear, uh, but contrary to the current recommendations, the postoperative adjuvant radiation uh, uh, has a negative impact, definitely. Maybe different best adjuvant therapy options for different subsets of patients are, uh, uh, are to be uh, applied. Uh, not only the cells uh, are uh, 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 posing a danger. However, with the oncogenic mutations in the resected bronchial margins, they have a, a negative uh, a prognostic uh, value. Uh, and uh, yes, uh, the uh, positive margin is a real black swan event. Uh, uh, several consequences. The damage control, what should we do? Postoperative chemotherapy. Uh, the question of the targeting therapy and immunotherapy is for the coming years. And uh, uh, if we uh, get a, a dark report, then we, uh, uh, from the pathological department, uh, the, uh, we have to ask what is the extent of the positivity, what is the cell type and the stage, because in stage one, uh, re-resection would be recommended in any, any other uh, a further uh, consideration is needed, the condition of the patient, and uh, uh, we have to decide what improves real survival, resection, or the adjuvant chemotherapy. So the take home message is that uh, uh, there is no general answer. It depends on the stage and the cell type, the chemosensitivity, whether there is a room uh, for target or immunotherapy, and uh, of course, I would uh, start with that, the patient around the R1 uh, resection line. Thank you. That's it. Please, questions. Because all views are all clear. No questions? No answer. No Only one question for me, if it's possible. When you have a patient with a lung cancer that is invading the chest wall, all is very difficult to to have uh, a correct position about the tumor that involves the bone, uh, the ribs, and so on. Do you perform radiotherapy after, always, or not? Which is your policy? Uh, my policy is chemo irradiation uh, because the Detterbeck paper. Uh, uh, which is an excellent guidance for me and uh, for my uh, unit where I work. Uh, yes, uh, that's our policy. So yeah. we, we, we just do not trust ourselves. And it's, it's, it, uh, with the chest wall, it's, it's, it's very complicated, uh, not for us, uh, but for the pathologist, because there's a too big chunk of tissue, and uh, you are lucky, I, I don't know, uh, uh, what sort of pathologists you have, uh, but uh, our pathologists are a little bit lazy, so we have to adjust our aggressivity for that. I agree with you. I yeah, think yeah, yeah, it's yeah. much better to do that. So, so yeah, yeah, to yeah, yeah. To, just to keep, keep a safe line. Yeah, yeah. Safe game. Safe game. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. So now.